Take a look at the economy. No, not the stock market. Walk around your neighborhood. See the people sleeping on the streets. Look at the individuals living in their vehicles. See the signs for EBT cards accepted here. What jobs are currently being posted? Higher paying middle class building jobs or low wage temporary retail based jobs? Look at the stores and advertisements everywhere offering you money in advance of your paycheck. All of these are indicators and yet most people People are too busy scrolling on Instagram to even see it. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at the reasons why America is falling apart, but it applies to everywhere all over the world, Canada, US, UK, Australia, New Zealand. This is happening everywhere to one degree or another. Now, when I look at certain indicators, maybe I'm looking at PE ratios, maybe I'm looking at the market itself, maybe I want to focus on unemployment. These are very typical indicators that most people talk about, but it's the other ones, the ones where you have to connect two or three dots to start to see the picture, those are the real telling ones. And this is why we have to look in greater detail than what we're getting in the mainstream media. That's what I try to do so often here on the channel. I hope you do appreciate that. So let's begin by taking a look at an issue that is really so critical to understand. The 400 richest Americans, the top 0.00025% of the population have tripled their share of the nation's wealth since the early 1980s, according to a report on wealth inequality. You have to understand, when you have 400 Americans owning more of the country's riches than 150 million adults in the bottom 60% of the wealth distribution, that is a problem. Think about it. 400 people have more money than 150 million adults. It's not two or five or 10 or 100 times more. It's insane how wide the gap is between the richest of the rich and those individuals that are at the bottom. And we're talking about a wealthy country like the United States. We're not comparing it on a global level. The numbers would be much worse. But think about that for a second. What has happened over the years to cause this? And as soon as you touch on that subject, it starts to irk. It starts to hurt. It starts to move people in a way they're not used to and they get uncomfortable. But that's what I talk about here on the channel. Many people don't want to know about it, but the central banking system itself has caused this. And most people are actually wanting, desiring more of that to occur, more money printing, easier monetary policies and of course they're going to be hit hard by it they can't even see it it's because they don't study history and they don't know the data that is so critical u.s wealth concentration seems to have returned to levels last seen since the roaring 20s we have gone back into this space and time in which people were living it up they were talking about the never-ending unparalleled growth and of course this cannot be sustained we we saw it back then, we're seeing it again today, it's going to be painful, I assure you. One of the obvious examples of an economy that is not doing well is the fact that you have 42 million people on food stamps. They call it SNAP. And of course, this SNAP program, it's different than what we had seen in the eras previous to this, where now you have an electronic card, which by the way, JP Morgan makes money off these cards. So people don't have to line up in the bread lines. They don't have to be there in public needing food. There isn't the same representation of how many people are struggling because you don't get to see it. Now you might see EBT cards accepted here on the window, but you're not going to see the people lining up essentially. So the statistics can be skewed for you to make it seem like things are fine and people squander the money. We know that there are some people, but 42 million, they're probably not all squandering it. Okay. That just shows you that the economy is not doing well. That's a large percentage of people. Even if you factor in that some of that money is being thrown away on garbage, that's fine. That's fair. However, as far as I'm concerned, there is just too many in this list to be able to chalk it up to money being thrown away. 
One million Americans live in RVs, meet the modern nomads. I know people who are subscribed to this channel, they're living in their RVs, they're happy with it, this is the lifestyle they chose. But you have to admit that there are countless people out there who are doing so because they can't afford another lifestyle. They go for the alternate simply because they can't have what most people would desire. Maybe they want a home, maybe they want to rent, maybe they want to buy. I'm not suggesting one is good or bad or anything. I'm just simply saying that I do believe a lot of people are doing this type of alternative lifestyle because of the money. That's the way it goes. Now, there are different things to look at. You've got the RV, you've got the van life, hashtag van life. You've got people living in tents. You've got people living on the streets and there's a lot of different levels to this. However, what we see today is that more people are finding themselves in this situation. Okay, I just want to show you the trend. I just want to talk about this. The number of people who live in their vehicles because they can't find affordable housing is on the rise even though the practice is illegal in many US cities. So for example, in Seattle, the number of people residing in campers and other vehicles surged 46% over the past year. Now you have to understand, this is in one city, an expensive city, and you find people that can't afford to live in a house, not an apartment, they can't even afford one with a roommate. So what do they do? They live in their vehicle and they believe it's going to be for just a day or two or a week or a month and then it drags on and those numbers keep growing and growing and growing you've seen it before i've even showed you here on the channel an individual riding his bike through these 10 cities i believe it was in california and he's riding for maybe 10 minutes and there's tents on either side the entire time how many people are living on the streets? I really wonder. I know that the statistics don't capture all of that, so it must be much worse than what we're seeing here. The problem is exploding in cities with expensive housing markets, including LA, Portland, and San Francisco. Now you have to think for yourself here, why is this happening? Why do we find individuals that have more money than half of the population and then you have all of these other people that are suffering on a daily basis? Do we point fingers at the 400 people or should we look one level deeper and understand the real reason, the truth as to why this occurs? Well, it's pretty obvious. The central banking system has created massive wealth inequality and today we have people begging and pleading with the central banks to continue to print the best thing would be to make them obsolete to get rid of them and eliminate the problem we have but instead people are saying print 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 let it go on forever and ever and ever but they don't understand the monetary system they have failed themselves and future generations it's a mistake and of course they will learn the hard way the problem is the central banks now let's move on to this issue here as of 2013 14,000 of the country's 87,000 dams were considered to have high hazard potentials, meaning that if the dams were to fail, there would be human casualties. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they're in bad condition. It just means that they need to maintain these dams or else that's going to be catastrophic for communities. Now we've seen so many of these giving way, giving problems. In fact, look right here as they highlight the fact that the average age of the country's dams is 50 two years. Now, I don't know if that's considered very old, but to me, that seems pretty old. 52 years. If that's not maintained, you're going to have problems. The group gave California a D for the conditions of its dams, levees, and flood control infrastructure, and they gave many dams throughout the nation this same grade. Imagine what would happen as these start to fail, as less money is being put into the infrastructure, taken out to be used to attack other countries. To me, not really a smart idea. Why not spend the money within your own country and instead build it up and ensure that everything is good and safe and you get to employ people in your own country, get them working, keep them working and ensure everything is just fine. But instead what happens, money leaves, money disappears. And that's the problem that we have today. Nearly 56,000 bridges called structurally deficient. They're trying to say it's crap, okay? Let me just tell you in plain English. Structurally deficient. You've seen it in the media how many bridges have fallen. You know, this happens more often than you would think. 
There's no money, apparently, to fix infrastructure, but there's a lot of money to go and spy on your phone calls. Well, everybody seems to be okay with that, apparently, but it's a big, big mistake that all of these countries are making. I've seen everywhere from Europe, US, and so on, where bridges have fallen, infrastructure falling apart. In my travels throughout Europe, I've seen just the economy is just dying. It's just rapidly falling apart, just like the infrastructure, quite sad in fact. And then last but not least, a new study of American teenagers and their reading habits finds that a third haven't read a book in hard copy or on a device like a Kindle in the past year. And I think personally that these statistics are probably much, much worse. However, the book that they're reading is probably for their school. So if it's not related to their school, they're probably not reading any books. And this is where we have a problem. Today, individuals are not prepared. They don't know anything. And that's sad. We've got a problem here that is not being presented to the public because it's not right there in front of their face. It's not being shown on CNN. It's not being given to them in the mainstream media so they don't know about it. But think about that. The most basic level of information gathering is from books. I love to read. Reading is so fantastic. It just brings you to life when you can take in that information. It is an absolute pleasure to read. And unfortunately today, we see most people, they couldn't care less. It's not about a new lifestyle or something has changed. Reading should be a part of everybody's life. Even if it's 10 or 15 minutes a day, spending some time reading really does improve your life on many levels, of course. But I just think that what we're seeing today is allowing the media, allowing those individuals who control everything from the top to have a very easy time at manipulating people and they do so very very, very well. And it's because you're not getting the real information that you should be. So I really do respect all those parents and, and family members out there who give certain books to their children, to their friends or family that are younger, and try to get them to learn the real data, the real information, even some of these more simple books out there that just help to put a little light bulb up inside their head to wake up to what's coming because life has really changed in the last decade. Really big, big changes have come. And unfortunately, most people are just not going to be on the good side of the equation. They're probably going to be on those negative statistics. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. I do appreciate that very much. And last but not least, if you want some of that financial education, these two books have everything you need. These are extremely simple. Anybody who's in the financial industry or not at all, doesn't know anything about it, will be able to take so much from these two books. You can check them out at the link in the description. And if you prefer the audiobook version, that's available at themoneygps.com.